Welcome back to the Hero's Forge, the sanctuary for warriors who refuse to bow down to life's challenges. Today we're diving into the heart of courage and fearlessness. We're talking about conquering your fears, and we're taking lessons from the stoic warriors who've mastered this art. Fear is the one thing standing between you and your greatness. It's the invisible wall that keeps you trapped in mediocrity. You want to be a hero, you want to be a warrior, then you've got to tear down that wall. So, how do we demolish this wall of fear? By arming ourselves with the wisdom of stoic warriors, men who faced life and death situations and came out stronger. We're going to dissect their teachings, their practices and their mindset to equip you with the tools you need to conquer your fears. Lesson 1. Understand the nature of fear. Listen up, warriors. Understanding the nature of fear is like unlocking the first level of a video game that's been kicking your ass. You've been stuck, right? Stuck in that job you hate, stuck in the fear of approaching someone you're attracted to, or stuck in the dread of failure. Why? Because you've been treating fear like it's some invincible boss enemy. But here's the game changer. Marcus Aurelius, the stoic emperor who led armies and ruled Rome, said, If you are distressed by anything external, the pain is not due to the thing itself, but to your estimate of it, and this you have the power to revoke at any moment. That's right. The power is in your hands. Fear isn't some external demon you have to slay. It's an internal judgment, a verdict you've passed on a situation. And judgments, my friends, can be overturned. Now let's get real. You're not just a passive player in the game of life. You're the damn programmer. You write the code, you set the rules. So why have you coded fear as this unbeatable level? Rewrite the damn thing. Start seeing fear not as a wall, but as a door, a door that leads to growth, to mastery, to becoming the hero you're meant to be. Every time fear shows up, it's an invitation, an invitation to step up, to level up. It's your soul's way of saying, hey, here's a challenge that can make you stronger, wiser, better. So the next time fear comes knocking, don't cower in the corner, stand tall, take a deep breath and welcome it like an old friend who's about to teach you something invaluable. Tear down the judgments, rewrite the code, and turn that fear into a stepping stone on your path to greatness. Lesson 2. Differentiate between real and imagined fears. All right, warriors, let's cut through the fog of war and get some clarity. You've got fears, we all do. But here's where most people screw up. They can't tell the difference between a lion and a house cat. What do I mean? Some fears are real. They're life and death. If you're in a burning building, that's a real fear. But most of the fears that are holding you back, they're as harmless as a house cat. Afraid of public speaking? Afraid of asking for a raise? Afraid of starting that business? Those are imagined fears, phantoms, illusions. Stoic warriors faced death on the battlefield, exile and public humiliation. And you know what? They stood tall, unflinching, because they knew the difference between real threats and imagined ones. They focused only on what they could control, their actions, their responses, their courage. Now, let's get this straight. I'm not saying your fears aren't real to you, but that's the point. They're real to you, not to reality. Seneca once said, We suffer more in imagination than in reality. Your mind has created a horror movie, and you're the star, but guess what? You're also the director. You can yell cut anytime you want. You can rewrite the script, change the ending, turn that horror movie into an action-packed adventure where you're the hero. So the next time your mind starts playing tricks on you, trying to scare you away from taking action, Remember this, you're the director of your life, not just a spectator. Differentiate between the lions and the house cats, between the real fears and the imagined ones. Then muster the courage to face them, to conquer them, and to emerge as the hero you were born to be. Lesson 3. Embrace the worst case scenario. Listen up, warriors. You want to conquer your fears? Then you've got to look them straight in the eye. I'm talking about embracing the worst-case scenario, the darkest, most terrifying outcome you can imagine. 
Stoics call this premeditatio malorum, or the premeditation of evils. Sounds grim, right? But it's not about becoming a pessimist. It's about becoming a realist, a strategist. Imagine you're stepping onto a battlefield. You wouldn't go in blind, would you? Hell no. You'd want to know where the traps are, where the enemy is strongest, where you could potentially lose it all. That's what embracing the worst-case scenario does for you. It prepares you for the battlefield of life. Now let's get practical. Say you're afraid of losing your job. What's the worst that could happen? You'll be unemployed, right? Money will be tight, you'll have to cut back on luxuries, maybe even move to a smaller place. But will you die? No. Will the world end? No. By facing the worst-case scenario head-on, you realize it's not the end of the world. It's just a setback, a challenge, another dragon to slay on your journey to becoming a hero. And here's the kicker. Once you face the worst case scenario, you're free. The fear loses its grip on you because you've looked it in the eye and said, is that all you've got? Warriors, this is a game changer. When you embrace the worst case scenario, you're not just preparing for failure, you're preparing for success. Because once you face the worst, Anything else is a walk in the park. You'll approach challenges with a new level of confidence, a new level of courage, because you've already faced the enemy in your mind and survived. So, the next time fear tries to hold you back, stare it down, dissect it, and embrace the worst that could happen. Then, go out there and prove to yourself that you're bigger than your fears, that you're a warrior, a hero in the making. Lesson 4. Turn fear into fuel. All right, warriors, uh, let's get one thing straight. Fear isn't your enemy. It's your untapped fuel. You feel that adrenaline rush, that heart-pounding sensation. That's not a sign to retreat. That's your body's way of saying, we're ready for action. Stoic warriors knew how to harness this. They didn't let fear paralyze them. They let it galvanize them. Think about it. When you're in a high-stakes situation, your senses are heightened, your focus is laser-sharp, and your body is primed for action. That's not a curse. That's a damn superpower. But here's the catch. You've got to channel that energy correctly. You've got to turn that fear into fuel for constructive action. Whether it's nailing a job interview, approaching someone you're attracted to, or taking a calculated risk in your business, use that adrenaline to your advantage. Make your fear work for you, not against you. Now, you, I'm not saying it's easy. Hell, if it were easy, everyone would be doing it. But you're not everyone. You're a warrior in the making. You've got to train yourself to redirect that fear-induced energy into focused, deliberate action. The next time you're scared, don't run away. Run towards the challenge feel the fear, acknowledge it, and then channel it into smashing whatever obstacle is in your way. Remember, warriors, fear is just energy, and energy can be redirected. So the next time life throws you into the ring, use that fear as your fuel to come out swinging. Show life that you're not just another pushover, you're a force to be reckoned with. Lesson 5. Cultivate courage through practice. Listen up, warriors. You think courage is something you're born with. Think again. Courage is a skill, and like any skill, it needs to be honed, practiced, and mastered. You don't become a warrior by reading about battles. You become one by stepping into the arena. The Stoics knew this. Epictetus wasn't just spouting philosophy when he said, practice yourself for heaven's sake in little things, and then proceed to greater. He was laying down a blueprint for building courage. Start small. Do something that scares you a little bit every single day. It could be as trivial as speaking your mind during a meeting or as monumental as quitting your dead-end job to pursue your passion. The point is to get your skin in the game, to get accustomed to that feeling of fear and to act in spite of it. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Why would I intentionally put myself in uncomfortable situations? Because, my friends, that's how you grow. And if you are in this channel, I'm sure you want to grow. 
That's how you build mental resilience. Each time you face a fear, you're laying another brick in your fortress of courage. And let me tell you, once that fortress is built, it's damn near impregnable. You become a person who can face challenges head on, who can stare adversity in the face and say, is that all you've got? Here's the kicker. And the more you practice courage, the easier it becomes. It's like a snowball rolling down a hill, gathering momentum. Before you know it, what used to scare the living daylights out of you becomes your new normal. You'll look back and wonder why you were ever scared in the first place. So, stop waiting for courage to magically appear. It won't. You've got to cultivate it, day by day, action by action. Remember, in the Hero's Forge, art, we're not about taking the easy way, we're about taking the courageous way. So get out there and start practicing your courage, one small act at a time. Lesson 6. Detach from the outcome. All right, listen up, because this is where most people screw up. You're so obsessed with the outcome that you paralyze yourself from taking any action. You're afraid of failing, of being judged, of not being good enough. Well, let me drop some stoic wisdom on you. The outcome is not in your control, but your actions are. Marcus Aurelius wasn't joking around when he said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Stop being a slave to the what-ifs and focus on the what-nows. You've got a job interview? Prepare like a beast. You've got a date? Be the best version of yourself. But once you've done your part, let go of the outcome. Whether you get the job or get the girl doesn't define you. What defines you is the effort you put in. Now I get it, detaching from the outcome is easier said than done. But here's the deal, the moment you detach from the results, you liberate yourself. You're no longer held hostage by your fears or insecurities. You're free to act, to live, to thrive. And guess what? When you focus on the process, the outcome usually takes care of itself. You become a magnet for success because you're too busy being awesome to worry about failure. So, the next time you find yourself gripped by fear of what might happen, remember this. In the Hero's Forge, we don't predict the future, we create it. Detach from the outcome, focus on the action, and let the chips fall where they may. Lesson 7. Understand the cost of inaction. Listen, warriors, this is the final lesson, and it's a big one. You need to understand the cost of inaction. You think doing nothing is safe? You think sitting on the sidelines will somehow make life easier? Think again. Seneca wasn't messing around when he said, it's not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste much of it. Every second you spend paralyzed by fear is a second you're not living. It's a second you're not conquering, not achieving, not becoming the hero you were born to be. You want to know what's scarier than failure. Regret. The haunting thought of what could have been if you just had the guts to act. Now, I want you to imagine something. Picture yourself old, frail, at the end of your life. You're looking back at all the years that have passed. What do you see? A life of adventure, risks, and meaningful struggles? Or a life filled with missed opportunities, unfulfilled dreams, and what-ifs? The Stoics teach us that contemplating our mortality isn't morbid. It's motivating. It's a kick in the ass, a wake-up call to stop wasting time and start living like you mean it. Here's the bottom line. The cost of inaction is a life half-lived. It's a life of mediocrity, of settling for less when you could have had so much more. So the next time fear tries to hold you back, remember the cost of doing nothing. Remember that life doesn't wait for the timid. In the Hero's Forge, we don't just exist. We live, we fight, we conquer. So, what's it going to be? Will you be a spectator or a warrior? The clock is ticking and the choice is yours. So, there you have it. Seven stoic lessons to help you conquer your fears and unleash the hero within. You can either continue to be a slave to your fears or you can rise above them. The choice is yours. This is the Hero's Forge, signing off. If you found value in this video, smash that like button and share it with someone who needs to hear this.
If you are interested in Stoicism, I really recommend you to watch our last video about seven Stoic lessons for your daily routine. Subscribe for more content that turns you from a spectator into a warrior. Until next time, be the hero you were born to be.